If I could have your attention, please. Welcome back. This is the uh, second sub-session of um, the research affordances of Wikipedia, the Reading Wikipedia International Conference. Um, what we're going to do in this uh, sub-session is we'll have uh, two talks, one after each other, um, and then the two respondents will uh, interview each other. So then we have a new, new format. And then after which time, uh, we'll have an open uh, Q&A session where we can have questions um, posed to all of the uh, speakers today from both the audience as well as via the live stream. If you're watching on the live stream at uh, bit.ly, so bit.ly slash reading Wikipedia, please place your questions in the comment space of the YouTube stream. Okay. Um, I would like to introduce uh, Brent Hecht uh, from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at the University of Minnesota, uh, who will talk about Omnipedia. One of the, I think, most fundamental uh, projects that looks at um, the uh, differences and similarities between um, the same article in different uh, Wikipedia language versions. Uh, Brent, uh, uh, Brent, you have the floor. Thanks so much, Richard. So as uh, Richard said, my name is Brent. Um, I am a professor at the University of Minnesota, where I co-lead a lab called uh, the Group Lens Research Lab. Now, the University of Minnesota, um, and Minnesota in general, is pretty cold. Um, you can see a bench hiding there underneath the snow. Um, that's a real-life ice road across Lake Superior, the largest uh, freshwater um, body in the entire world. And then uh, that's a Fahrenheit temperature approaching uh, where uh, Fahrenheit and Celsius come together. So the nice thing about uh, Minnesota being cold is lots of time for indoor thinking about research questions, right? <laughs> and um, one of the uh, families of research questions we thought about for a while in, in my group and going back to when I was in graduate school, uh, or a family of questions, relates to multiculturalism and multilingualism, especially with regard to their application to online communities um, like Wikipedia. So we've heard about this a lot today, right? Just to make sure we're all on the same page, we know that Wikipedia is not just Dutch and English, right? Wikipedia exists in dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of other language editions. And prior to the work I'm gonna be talking about um, in this talk, really not much was understood about the relationships between all of these language editions. There were, however, um, lots of assumptions about these relationships, both implicit and explicit. So for instance, in the computer science literature, we found lots of examples of folks interpreting the uh, larger language editions, like German, like Dutch, and especially like English, um, as supersets of the smaller language editions. So in other words, there was an assumption that the smaller of two language editions had roughly uh, no unique content relative to the larger of those two language editions. Now we also saw developers of artificial intelligence systems that use Wikipedia as a source of world knowledge. And this is a really big thing I haven't heard talked about a lot today. So I hope we get to that. Maybe Bernie, you and I can interview, interview each other about that. Lots of AI systems use Wikipedia as effectively their brain. And we saw folks who develop these systems assuming that the brain would output the same thing regardless of the language edition that was being used, right? So uh, these are examples of what we call the global consensus hypothesis, uh, which, I, which uh, supposes that encyclopedic world knowledge is largely consistent across language-defined cultures. And what this would mean in terms of multilingual Wikipedia, right, is that um, the language editions cover roughly the same set of concepts, one of course controlling for the number of articles, and um, the articles are roughly the same, right? Now, looking at the relevant social science literature, on the other hand, uh, we, of course, found something pretty different. Uh, Chef and Clark, uh, to name uh, one a group of literature, uh, they have uh, established that each cultural community has its own set of common knowledge, which is a fact that is integral to our ability uh, to uh, communicate with one another. That's a, a very interesting line of research. Happy to talk about that more if folks are interested. Um, and Clark actually lays out how this is true of language-defined cultures in, in particular. Now, all of this work from the social sciences predicts what we call the global diversity hypothesis. And uh, this, this hypothesis supposes that encyclopedic world knowledge is different in each language-defined culture. And what this would mean in terms of Wikipedia, right, is that each language edition is going to have a great deal of diverse information not in the other language editions. And even when two language editions do cover the same concept, right, they both have an article about the same concept, those two articles are going to be uh, pretty different. 
So we have something of a scientist's dream, right? We have competing hypotheses, and, and the easy question for us to ask now, right, is, is for which hypothesis is there more support? So we used our uh, Wikibrain software library, which you can actually download and use yourselves right now. I'll, I'll talk a bit about that at the end of uh, my little uh, short uh, a talk here. Uh, we use Wikibrain to process and examine 25 language editions. You can see them here. And the first question we, we asked was whether these language editions cover the same set of concepts. So in other words, is multilingual Wikipedia full of concepts like chocolate on the right there that exist in, in many, many, or have articles in many, many language editions, right? Chocolate actually had articles in all 25 language editions that we looked uh, we looked at, or is multilingual Wikipedia more full of uh, concepts on, um, on uh, I think I said right, that's left, and there we go, right, uh, Rogenmarkt, right? Rogenmarkt is a neighborhood in uh, Germany. Um, it only has an article in the German Wikipedia, right? Is multilingual Wikipedia, uh, does it consist more of stuff on the left or stuff on the right? And it turns out that definitely the left is, is the case. So that big bar there um, on the left here conveniently uh, is uh, concepts that only exist in one language edition of Wikipedia. So I'm actually gonna do something revolutionary here and step out from behind the microphone, I'll speak loudly. On the x-axis here, we have the number of languages in which a concept appears. And on the y-axis, we have the number of concepts that appear in that number of languages, right? So here we're talking about concepts that only exist or only have articles in one language edition of Wikipedia. I'll, I'll come back. And then I'll, 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 I'll uh, come back to the, uh, conform to the uh, microphone norm here. Um, if we go all the way over to the right there, we're only looking at actually 0.17% of concepts. So concepts that are highly multilingual like chocolate that exist in all 25 language editions that we looked at, these are only 0.17% of concepts. So with that big tall bar, we got pretty curious, right? We, we wanted to see what all of these single language concepts look like, what all of these uh, concepts that only have articles in one language edition, what do they all look like? Well, this is one. Uh, this is a hillbilly Jedi. It only has an, an article in the English Wikipedia. It is an article about um, uh, the a very uh, a country music album with a wonderful name. Unfortunately, the content doesn't quite match. Um, by the uh, country music duo Big and Rich, uh, only has an article in the English Wikipedia. Same deal with the uh, Festival Internacional Chihuahua. This is roughly the state fair of the state of Chihuahua, Mexico. Only an article in the Spanish Wikipedia. Same deal with Dieter Meets. Who knows who Dieter Meets is? Well, we, get, we have one, my German friend over there. <laughs> and that's about as many as, as uh, uh, no Dieter Meets when I present this in the United States. Well, he only has an article in the German Wikipedia. He's a German soccer star from, uh, as you can tell from his outfit, the 1970s. Um, this is Dieter Gross. He's a, a German politician from Berlin. He only has an article in the German Wikipedia. This is Dieter Klump, a German business executive, only an article in the German Wikipedia. And in fact, there are 762 more Dieters that only have articles in the German Wikipedia. <laughs> so it's not just the large language editions that have these single language concepts, which is, is quite fascinating to me. Um, Catalan has over 81,000. And uh, Hebrew, which is the smallest language edition we looked at, um, over 28,000. Uh, but it was English that had the most single language concepts with um, 2.1 million. And looking at these concepts in more detail, we saw things like this, right? The population of the Byzantine Empire being a, an English only concept. And this got us thinking about what we call the English as superset corollary to the global consensus hypothesis. And, and under this corollary, we would expect that English, which is the oldest and the largest language edition, would cover roughly all of the concepts that are in, for instance, the uh, German Wikipedia, all the concepts that have an article in the German Wikipedia. It turns out that this is actually not at all the case. Um, the English Wikipedia only covers about 52% of the concepts in the German Wikipedia. So that means that 48% of concepts in the German Wikipedia are, don't have an English equivalent. And uh, the, uh, looking at this in a, a little bit differently here, hopefully the color is a little bit better from your angle, uh, you can see that uh, the French and the German Wikipedias, which are roughly the same size, uh, they, have, um, they only cover 33 to 36% of each other's uh, concepts. So we've seen that at least in terms of concept coverage, right? There's a great deal of um, support for the global diversity hypothesis and a great deal of evidence against the global consensus hypothesis. So um, 
This here is a slide that uh, uh, depicts, uh, like chocolate, concepts that had articles in all 25 language editions that we looked at. So we have Sarah Palin, we have Justin Bieber, we have Albert Einstein, we have William Shakespeare. I challenged my students to come up with another set that had all of these things in it, and they, they couldn't. Um, so even if a concept does appear on the slide, right, even if it exists or has articles in 25 language editions, or maybe it just has an article in 10 language editions or just two language editions, right, that's no guarantee it's going to be described in the same way in each of these language editions. in English. all of the In more detail, um, but this is this is a, a one way I like to look at it. Um, this here is a map of a centrality met metric that we we use. We call and uh, that we use and we call um, in degree sums. And in degree sums are, are basically uh, you can they're a centrality metric, um, which means you can think of them as basically an importance metric. And this is a map from work we did back in two thousand nine. And in this map, the darker colors indicate areas that are, according to the Polish Wikipedia, more important to all of human encyclopedic knowledge, and the larger areas indicate areas that are less important to all of you know encyclopedic human knowledge. And you can see here, looking at the colors and comparing uh, the colors to legend, uh, according to the Polish Wikipedia. Poland is actually 3.4 times more important to encyclopedic world knowledge than any other country in the entire world. Uh, with state improvement. I really like this, this series of visualizations. Um, this is this important metrics, importance metric, right, looking at the United States and Canada. And you can see that north of the Mexico border, which is what we'd expect, right, given that we're looking at the English Wikipedia here, north of the Mexico border, eh, the distribution roughly follows population, right? California is a very populous state. So is New York, Pennsylvania, Ontario is the most populous province in Canada. But uh, I'd call your attention over to eastern Canada. So right here. Um, I'm going to switch this to a map of uh, the importance metric according to the French Wikipedia. <laughs> so English Wikipedia, French Wikipedia. And if there are any Americans in the audience, I probably need to explain the geography to you. Uh, that province of Canada there speaks French, and that's why we see the, um, the uh, 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 change of in importance in the French Wikipedia. Okay, so we've seen lots and lots of evidence in support of the global diversity hypothesis and lots of evidence against the global consensus hypothesis. We've seen this with concepts, we've seen this with subconcepts, and we've seen this spatially. Uh, what does all of this mean for uh, those of us who read Wikipedia? Well, in general, I'd say that the, the uh, diversity of world knowledge in Wikipedia presents both a challenge and an opportunity for those of us who are among the 400 million people a month who look at Wikipedia. Uh, the challenge is that uh, large percentages of world knowledge are siloed behind language barriers, right? So even if I speak English and two or three or four other languages, I'm still missing out on a lot of information. 
Uh, the opportunity lies in the fact that, as we've seen, Wikipedia really represents an unprecedented repository of world knowledge diversity. Uh, humanity has never seen anything like this before. So um, this is where a system we built, uh, as Richard was talking about, uh, called Omnipedia. This is where Omnipedia comes in. Um, Omnipedia reduces the silo effect by providing users with structured access in their native language to over 8 million concepts from the 25 language editions that we, we were studying in the uh, previously presented work. And Omnipedia also leverages the opportunity presented by multilingual Wikipedia by highlighting the similarities and differences between each of the language editions. And this allows the user to see the diversity of the underlying represented knowledge. So folks begin using Omnipedia by typing in a name of a concept in their native language. You can see here I have typed in conspiracy theory. This is a really fun one. Uh, conspiracy theory, uh, excuse me, Omnipedia then goes through um, the article about conspiracy theories in all 25 languages. So we look at the English article on conspiracy theory, the German article on conspiracy theory, and so on and so forth. And Omnipedia mines out entities that are mentioned in each of these 25 articles. Um, each entity gets assigned to a circle on the screen here, and uh, these tiny circles in just one color represent entities that are mentioned in just one language edition's article on the conspiracy theory concept. So, for example, here are the entities that are only mentioned in the English article on conspiracy theory. You got things like the Liberal Party of Canada. Maybe Bernie can tell us a little bit more about that. Um, but of course, if you, if you only read the English Wikipedia's article, right, you're going to be missing out on a lot. Like, for instance, information about all of these entities that are only mentioned in the German article on conspiracy theory. And all of these entities that are only mentioned in the Spanish article. And in fact, all 25 articles had at least, it, it had information about at least one entity that um, no other language edition discussed. Um, so one thing that you'll note here is that a lot of these uh, unique entities uh, reflect the uh, uh, cultural context of the corresponding language edition. So for example, here um, you can see that the Chinese Wikipedia is the only one to mention conspiracy theories related to SARS. Uh, the Hebrew Wikipedia is the only one that's gonna, that talks about uh, conspiracy theories related to Fatah. And Hebrew is actually the only one that also mentions a conspiracy uh, theory in the Middle East about Microsoft Windows. <laughs> So if you click on that circle, uh, Omnipedia will tell you uh, how Windows is discussed in the context of the Hebrew article on conspiracy theory. Uh, this is the only functionality in uh, all of Omnipedia that relies on machine translation. That's something we're pretty proud of. Um, if we uh, take a look at what the machine translation tells us, it tells us that according to the Hebrew Wikipedia, there's a conspiracy theory that the U.S. government convinced Microsoft to put some secret code into Windows so that when the U.S. wants to go to war with a Middle Eastern country, um, it can uh, destroy all the computers that run Windows and presumably more easily take over the country, although at this point that's beginning uh, you know, less certain, I guess. Okay, so, uh, so far we've been looking at um, unique information, right, that's exclusive to a single language edition. Um, Omnipedia also shows similarities in coverage. So for example, move over to the right here, um, the circles are gonna get larger and more multicolored. And these represent entities that are discussed in two articles or three language editions articles or four language editions articles and so on and so forth um, on conspiracy theory. So if we zoom in here and if we go all the way over to the right, to look at entities that are mentioned in all or nearly all language editions coverage of the conspiracy theory concept. And this, of course, is fun, right, because it hints at what is globally understood to be related to conspiracy theories. So we got things like moon landing, and we got things like politics and Freemasonry, um, September 11th, not surprisingly, and so on and so forth. So I'll note here that we're currently showing uh, 25, all 25 language editions. Um, this is nice for a good global multilingual Wikipedia overview, but it's say if you wanted to compare, say, um, Dutch and French, uh, you can turn off all the other languages and just look at Dutch and French. Uh, you can also change the um, native language here uh, to uh, anything or any one of the 25 supported languages. So you can see it's gone from conspiracy theory to teoria conspirativa. Um, this is Spanish. To me, this is one of the most important Omnipedia features because it means that everything that is in any of the 25 language editions is now available to anyone who speaks any of the 25 languages. So um, this was a, a really important feature for us to put in. And we got a, a decent amount of press coverage about Omnipedia, and the coolest thing for us uh, was that this coverage came from around the world. And as native English speakers, the entire team uh, is uh, made of native English speakers, it was clear to us that Omnipedia really resonated not among our population, that it resonated particularly with folks uh, who are non-English speakers. And uh, the takeaway from this, we think, is that there's a ton of interest in this type of system to 
ton of interest in reading Wikipedia, um, as uh, we were hearing earlier, um, from in a multilingual way. So how can you get your hands on Wikipedia? Uh, the answer is stay tuned for 2016. We're actually about halfway through the funding. I think we need to take this from a lab prototype to a, a wide deployment. Uh, a lot of the natural language processing on the back end is pretty computationally intensive, which unfortunately means the funding needs are higher. Uh, but for now, I would encourage you folks to take a look at the Omnipedia paper uh, for additional details on the system. And, and there are a bunch of other fun examples in there, including like Johnny Cash and these types of things. Um, all of the uh, papers I've talked about today, or all the, the work uh, um, I've talked about today is available in papers that are all available on my website, um, brenheck.com. Um, perhaps more interestingly, I also want to highlight that we've actually open sourced a lot of the code behind Omnipedia, uh, and through this is all through our Wikibrain software package. Uh, Wikibrain is a pretty big project. It got some funding from the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, it's a project I co-lead with Shalad Sen at McAllister College, and Wikibrain's mission is actually to democratize computation on Wikipedia. So uh, that might be a fun topic to talk about during the question session. And with that, Donk Uvel, um, any uh, particular, well, actually, let me defer questions until um, after Bernie's talk.